Okay, welcome back to another episode of What the Heck Do All These Buttons Do? So in the last video I went over a channel strip, told you what most of the buttons did, so you can uh, watch that if you want to know a bit more about these consoles. In this video I'm going to update you on some of the changes we've made with regards to routing and then I will give you a demonstration on the dynamic automation and show you how to use that. Uh, first off, uh, some of the changes we've made, we've gone fully analog. So now the routing uh, coming in from the studio, from the mics comes in on channels one to 16. It goes out to the tape machine over there and comes back in via the patch where we can patch in any of the hardware and comes back in on the tape returns for channels one to 16. So when you're listening back, you need to have the flip button pushed so that we're listening to the tape return and not the mic input. Uh, just to cover another question we had uh, with regards to noise on this console. Um, I've also read it on some internet forums, people complaining that they're noisy. Um, they're not actually, they're super, super quiet. I think what they're actually referring to is uh, ground loop uh, interference essentially what you get when you connect a uh, piece of digital equipment to uh, analog hardware you can introduce a ground loop and you'll get this sort of little digital sounding um, it almost sounds like a, a hummy version of morse code that will come through on your on your signal chain uh, there's various ways you can get rid of that, you just look up how to uh, solve a ground loop interference problem. Um, I'm sure there's loads of videos on YouTube about that. I won't go into it here because it's quite difficult and it's not a problem for us because we're fully analogue here now anyway. So, okay. Once you are happy with your recording and you're at the mixing stage, you're going to probably want to automate some of the mixing process. Now on this console, we have a little automation computer and this will, it doesn't have motorized faders, but it will remember what you're doing with the faders. So you can automate all the faders. You can automate the mute on and off. You can also automate uh, turning the EQs on and off, which would be a little bit strange, but you might want to do that, who knows? Okay, so first thing you're gonna have to do if you want to use automation is unfortunately set up the timing between your console and whatever else you're using in this case it'll be the tape machine this can be uh, tricky depending on what sort of setup you have if you've got lots of midi things you're probably going to be using like an apogee word clock or some hideous piece of hardware like that which is going to set all the timings with all the rest of your hardware. Uh, these are a nightmare to set up. If you've ever tried it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, but we're in fully analog world here. So I'm only gonna be covering how to set up the timing on your tape machine. So essentially the console is gonna know where we're up to on the tape, because if it doesn't, then how is it gonna remember your automation moves? So the first thing we're gonna to have to do is something called striping the tape. So, this console, if most uh, old analog consoles, will have um, a timing out and a timing in on the back of the console. This basically just emits a noise, which is recorded to your selected track on your tape machine. In this case, we're gonna be using track number 16. Uh, your tape machine may have its own track specifically for getting the timings. Otherwise, uh, you can just choose, I mean, it doesn't really matter what track you use, you can use any one you want, but in this case, we're gonna use 16. So, we are going to arm track 16 on the tape machine. We are gonna go over to the automation side of the console, and there's various buttons here, but essentially, all we really need to do is set the time. So you can do that by pressing Shift and one. Doesn't really matter what you put in here because it's gonna be copying it to the tape anyway hit return and then when we're ready to go we're going to hit, hit shift and two that's tc gen so that's going to generate the time code that's going to be recorded onto track 16 so let's just make sure at the beginning of uh, where we need to be so that'll be uh, around about zero i think just find the beginning of the track right there we go okay let's reset where zero is 
Okay, so we've set where zero is on the tape machine. As you can see, there is an input coming through that's from the console telling us what time it is to record to the tape. So we're going to hit record and play. So the tape is rolling. I'm going to start to hear some noise. And on the console, we're going to press shift and TC gen. Now we see the clock has started running and that is now being recorded to the tape. So you've got two options. Now you could just do the recording for the track or you could you know, cover the whole tape with your, with your chosen time code. So I won't let you sit through it. We'll uh, skip this part. Okay, just wind that back to the beginning. So once you've finished recording or striping the tape, recording the time code to the tape, uh, we'll just wind back to the beginning and check that it has recorded the time code. So if we play the tape and look for the clock running on the console, and there it is. So the clock's running, so that's now getting the time from the tape and we're ready to put in some automations. So I'll just back that up. Back to the start. And for the purposes of demonstration, I'm just going to put in a basic automation on the master channel. I'm going to fade uh, the track in so that you can have an example of what we're doing. So I'll fade it in around about there. Or should we do it at this point after the drums? Let's do it after. It'll be easier to uh, easier to see after the drums. So just back that up and see when it came in. It was around 50 odd seconds. Okay, 53, 54 seconds, that's where I'll put the fade in. So we'll back the tape up and we're ready to record our automation. So uh, we have each channel obviously has its own buttons for the automation side of things. You've got write mode, uh, update, uh, read mode. Uh, there's also the universal buttons up here so you can put all the channels into write mode update read uh, null just tells you uh, where the faders are in relation to any automation changes you've made um, i'll just quickly go over the bypass buttons again that was in the, the previous video you can go and check that out if you want to know what all the other buttons do uh, so bypass doesn't bypass the uh, channel input it bypasses the vca uh, vca automation on the channel so uh, because uh, vca is voltage controlled it can introduce a little bit of noise into the signal chain so any channels that you're not uh, automating you want to have them the automation bypassed uh, just to help reduce uh, reduce the noise floor okay so in this case we're going to be uh, fading in the master fader on this and just have a general fade in at around what was it 54 seconds i think it was so we'll hit play on the tape See that that's going, go into right mode, bring the fader down, and then watch the clock. And at 54 seconds, we'll bring up the fader. Okay, whiz over to the same machine, stop the tape, back that up. And fingers crossed, let's play, put everything into read mode, and when we reach about 54 seconds we should hear it fade in, we can see on the meters there that the track's already starting, and there's the fade in. So it's quite straightforward. If we wanted to uh, adjust that fade in now, we would repeat the same process, put it in update mode. Um, you can also clear out the entire memory uh, by pressing shift and clear. And that'll get rid of all the uh, all the things we're doing. You want to show you sure you want to do it? Yes, we are. And that's now erased the automation that I've just done. If you want to save the automation for another day and be able to recall it, you can use this snazzy little floppy drive. Uh, just press shift and store. If you've got any floppy disks still left over from the 90s, you could use those. Uh, and then you can recall the uh, the mix that you've done previously. Okay, I think that's essentially 
all you need to know to get started with automation.